Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank the audience and all the organizers of this international conference, professors Denise Freire, Ana Célia Castro, Adalberto Vieira, Adilson de Oliveira, Leonardo Bularmac, e Marta Irvig. Thank you very much for this organization. It is a great honor for me to present Dr. Kurt Vutrich, who will talk about 100 years of the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, personal reminiscence and outlook. Dr. Vutrich, it's a great pleasure to have you here. Dr. Vutrich awarded his PhD at the University of Basel. Then he continued with a postdoctoral position at the University of California, Berkeley, for two years. Afterwards, he stayed two years more in New Jersey. And then he returned to Switzerland, where he began his career at the ETH Zurich, rising to professor of biophysics in 1980. He's currently also working in the Scripps Research Institute in La Jolla, California, at the I Human Institute of Shanghai Tech University, and at the graduate program in chemistry biology at UFRG in Brazil. He's a researcher of the National Institute for Science and Technology of Structural Biology and Bioimaging, also in Brazil. And in July 2012, he helped establish the National Center of Structural Biology and Bioimaging, Senabio, at our university. He has also been a visiting professor at the University of Edinburgh, the Chinese of University of Hong Kong, and Yonsei University. Dr. Vutrich has worked with one of the first superconducting NMR spectrometers, studying the structure and dynamics of proteins during his career. His research led to the complete assignment of resonances for proteins, among others, the bovine pancreatic trypsin inhibitor and glucagon, an important hormone. Dr. Vutrich was awarded the Luisa Gross Vorwitz Prize from Columbia University in 1991. The Luigi Prize for Medicine in 1993, the Otto Warburg Medal in 1999, and half of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 20, 2002. Sorry, in 2002, he awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his development of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy for determining the three-dimensional structure of biological macromolecules in suspension, in solution. He was also elected a foreign member of the Royal Society in 2010 and awarded at the 2018 Frey International Sustainability Award. Congratulations for this outstanding career, Dr. Vutrich. You disseminate science in addition to making science of, high, of the highest quality. Your trajectory shows the genius associated with the objective of scientific development in emerging countries like China and Brazil. Congratulations again for your career, the sensitivity, 
and the attention to our institution. It's a great, great pleasure and an honor to have the opportunity to attend your keynote conference today at the Desirable Tomorrow's International Conference during the commemoration of our university centenary. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for this very kind introduction, which right away makes me feel at home in Rio once again. From my side, I want to congratulate UFRJ for the 100th anniversary. It's now 101 years, I'm afraid. And to extend my best wishes for the next 100 years. I only regret not to be in Rio today to celebrate in person with you. My reminiscences cannot relate to all of the 100 years of UF UFRJ, but to more than the last four decades. And it is a pleasure for me to recall a long line of scientific exchanges that led to lasting friendships with colleagues in Brazil. In the past, I have seen great times for Brazil, politically, economically, and in scientific research, which took turns with more difficult times. Today, I'm afraid that we are all living in a difficult time, but the history has shown that Brazil will again and again aim high and occupy its important role in the world. When I now recall my experiences in Brazil and with Brazilian colleagues, then I most of all want to demonstrate how great the times were even just 10 years ago when I started to work on a regular basis in Brazil. But let me start with the beginning. My first contact with Brazil was in 1954 on the occasion of the Football World Cup in Switzerland. The Brazilian national team was accommodated in the Swiss National School of Sports in Macleinen, Macola, which was very near to my high school and was actually directly associated with the high school so that we got our sports education in Macklingen. And so we had a chance to watch the Brazilian football team throw close in and I only watched one of their games during the competition. This, of course, touches on my first occupation, which was as a sports instructor in Swiss mountain resorts as well as in Swiss high schools. Quite a few years later, I had the first contacts with science in Brazil. This started in 1978 when I became 
the Secretary General of the International Union of Pure and Applied Biophysics. My contact in Brazil was Leopoldo Danais. Also, Leopoldo is best known for his important contributions to international science in the International Union of Biochemistry, now IUBMB. He also represented Brazil in the IUPAP. And so from 1978 on, we had regular exchanges by letters at the time, one would still send letters with Leopoldo de Meis. The next important encounter with Brazilian science was in 1981 when I was part of the organizing committee of the International Congress of Biophysics in Mexico City. And this is where I first met with Professor Gerson Silva, who at the time was a young student. And he told me that attending this Congress was a very important event in his early scientific life. It took quite a few years more until I actually visited Rio. This was my second visit in Latin America after a short stay in Caracas in 1970. And my visit to Rio was actually closely linked to this first visit in Caracas, because at that time I was still very much in physics. My interests were probably more deeply embedded in physics than in biology. And so Professor George Pemsky, an old acquaintance from my times at Bell Telephone Laboratories, invited me to speak at the Centro Brasileiro de Pesquisas Físicas. And I must say I was amazed at the high level of mostly theoretical physics that was pursued in this institute. It really had a beautiful group of established physicists, most of whom have emigrated from Europe to Latin America. On this occasion, Leopoldo de Meis also organized a so a seminar talk for me at the Department of Biochemistry at UFRJ. And this was my very first time to set foot onto the campus of your university. It took again quite a long time until my next visit. And this probably had to do with the political and economic situation in Brazil at the time. I understand that the present constitution was introduced only in 1988 and a certain degree of economic stability was achieved on the basis of this constitution only in the mid-1990s. And so in 1991, I visited Rio again to participate in a 
workshop on macromolecular structure investigation by NMR, which was organized by Professor Jason Silva and his colleagues. The meeting was held at the Marina Palace Hotel, which later on became our home abroad in Brazil. And it was a very interesting and high level meeting in 1999. From in the 21st century, the frequency of my visits to Brazil increased quite substantially. In 2001, I visited the Butantan Institute in Sao Paulo, where a colleague from my times at Bell Telephone Laboratories, uh, Dr. Tetsuo Yamane, was working at the time. And from Sao Paulo, I then was driven by car to the coast to attend the Brazilian International Genome Conference in Angra dos Reis. This was in 2001, and things were really going strong in Brazil. It was simply amazing for us to see a group of about 300 mostly many, very junior scientists who had made important contributions not only to the sequencing of the human genome, but they had sequenced the genomes of economically important microbes in Brazil. And I remember that this made the cover of nature on the occasion. It was an admirable time for genomics research in Brazil. From 2003 to 2006, Professor Marcio Salmeida spent time as a visiting scientist in my laboratory at the Scripps Research Institute, where he made important contributions to the investigation of the SARS coronavirus proteome, work that is again of high importance today in connection with the investigations on the highly homologous COVID-causing uh, version of the coronaviruses. In 2004, I paid a first visit to Campinas, where they had built Brazil's first cyclotron, and they also installed an NMR laboratory so that they could pursue biostructural research by combined use of X-ray crystallography and NMR. On the same trip, I attended the Latin American Protein Society meeting in Angra dos Reis. And these years were great years in Brazil. It was very encouraging to see how science was evolving at a rapid rate. Along these lines was also my next visit in 2007 when I attended the inauguration 
of the Highfield NMR building at UFRJ. In 2011, I visited again in Campinas and at the University of Sao Paulo in Sao Paulo. And I remember distinctly that the newspapers on the day after our lectures had a headline which said that Professor Ada Yonat and myself had accepted to move to Brazil to take positions in the Brazilian science establishment. I do not know about uh, the outcome of this promise for Ada Yonat but for me, it turned out that I was indeed accepting a part-time employment as Pesquisado Visitante Especial in the program Science Without Borders. And here again, it was Professor Gerson Silva, Professor Marcius Almeida, who were my closest contacts. And jointly with Marcius, I supervised a PhD student, Leonardo Vasquez, who successfully graduated in 2016 and with whom I had contact again over the years, most recently, about two weeks ago. So this was a most encouraging experience for me. I must also add that while things were at a peak in 2010 to 2014, one could feel that the situation began to become more difficult in the following few years. From 2012 to 2016, my wife and I paid two to three annual visits to Rio, where we always stayed at the Hotel Marina Palace in Leblon. We, I followed the developments of important organizations within UFRJ, the National Institute of Science and Technology, or INBEB, the Giri Jonas National Center of NMR, or CNRMN, and the National Center for Structural Biology and Bioimaging, Genabio, and all these were, of course, initiated by Professor Gerson Silva. It is important that these formal organizations or organizational units within UFRJ were founded in the good times because they continue to exist and they are ready at all times to pick things up when the overall situation will improve. Let me mention a few special events that occurred during the four years of my tenure of a position at UFRJ. In, they all are testimony to the fact that things were going well. And I think it is important to look back for encouragement to how it will be again hopefully soon. In 2012, the Biophysical 
Latin American Federation of Biophysical Societies Congress was held in Busios in 2013. I was elected a corresponding member of the Academia Brasileiro de Ciencias, which is a great honor for me. I was very proud uh, when I looked through the membership of foreign members over the years. And just to name Albert Einstein as a member made me feel very good indeed. And it was a great experience to attend the formal introduction into the academy. In 2013, there was another important Congress, an international Congress on analytical proteomics in Sao Pedro. In 2014, we inaugurated the new NMR facility with the highest field maglet at the time in the Southern Hemisphere. In 2014, I got to visit places quite far out of Rio, but always through connections that were established at UFRJ. For example, I was visiting the University of Sao Paulo in Araraquara, and I was attending a meeting in Campos de Rodao. And on this occasion, again, we traveled long distances by car across the beautiful Brazilian landscape. In 2015, I visited for the first time the Brazilian site of the first Iguazu on the occasion of the national meeting of the Brazilian Physical Society. So you see, I was back to physics again for a change. But in the same year, there was also the IUBMB Congress held in Fosto Iguazu. And you see, in these years, there was indeed a lot of, there were a lot of activities, and it was simply a joy to mingle with the scientists in Brazil. In 2016, it was a chemical society that invited me for a talk in Goiania. And in 2018, we celebrated the 30th anniversary of structural biology at UFRJ, which was first organized under the name of LTPV, which then became the Nabio. As you can guess from my reminiscences, Brazil has become a second home abroad for us, and my wife and I really fell in love with Rio and only regret that for the moment, the possibilities are no longer here to join you in person. As some of you may remember, we were ready to 
participate in person in this meeting in May 2020. We had airline tickets booked and, and all, and unfortunately, also this activity was um, stopped by the pandemic. But it has been great to be in Brazil during the first two decades of the 21st century. I, to my surprise, I discovered that I presented more than 30 formal lectures at events in Brazil during this time. Now, looking forward to the next years, things must improve and just look back how it was as little as five years ago and even more ten years ago and we must now be on the way up to similar positive ways of thinking and similar means available also for scientific research. Outside of Brazil, the world, of course, hopes that the natural beauties of the country and the natural resources of the country will be saved through these difficult times so that they can again be enjoyed after the next recovery. There is hope. I can tell you that Sao Paulo is among the very few international destinations that the Swiss International Airline has maintained during the pandemic and they continue to fly to Sao Paulo more often than to the United States. So as soon as things improve, the way will be open to return to Brazil. And I look very much forward to meeting with you all on the next occasion. And with this, I would also like to extend my very best wishes to UFRJ and also is associated with the university for the coming years. And I would like to thank you again for the invitation to join you on this important occasion of the 100th centenary. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Dr. Kurt Wutrich. It's a great pleasure for us and an honor to hear you today. I would like uh, to finish this lecture with a word from Dr. Kurt Butrich that is an example for the young scientists in our country, especially in our university. Dr. Butrich said once, if somebody told me this can't be done in science. I felt it was a challenge and I would try to do it. I worked intensely for 10 years because I wanted to prove that one of these impossible things could be done. Yes, Dr. Kurt Vutrich, sometimes things seem impossible to be done. But hard work, passion are here to show us that these impossible things can surely be done, even in countries like Brazil, where science today is unfortunately being questioned. Thank you again. Your presence here honors us, and you are an example for 
our scientists in Brazil. Cool. You can you all can open. open your yes. <laughs> Your, your, your videos, images, no, yes. your your cameras and 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 your microphones, please. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Now we are. Professor Gutrich, thank you very much for your unforgettable lecture. This I would like to say that your room, your office is waiting for you here at the Senabim. Uh, I hope that with the vaccine, you can visit, you, you will visit Rio again and our university in a couple of months, I hope. Thank you again. Marcius. Professor Wutrich, I want to thank you again for all your support, not only uh, for me, of course, for me it was very important, but also for the university. And yeah, it's always very good to hear from you and I hope we can meet again soon in person. I was clapping my hand, but I mean, it doesn't make the same effect, <laughs> sorry. Thank you very much again, Kurt, for all that you have done for me and for the university. And please say my best wishes to Marian as well. Sure, will. Thank you. Jason. Yes. Well, Kurt, I want to thank you for, I think, your reminence showed very well how linked you are to Brazil since the early, uh, uh, late 70s. Well, in the beginning, 50s, by the, the soccer, by the football, and then in the late 70s and the beginning of 80s. So uh, you gave an example how you have been uh, influenced uh, many generations. Uh, when I first met you, I was an uh, uh, undergraduate student in the medical school. Uh, then I vis then I, I received from you a check in 1984 when I attended the uh, uh, the uh, IUPAB Congress in uh, Bristol, you uh, uh, and you and uh, you gave examples how uh, for so many times you have been here in Brazil giving lectures, uh, especially talking to young students. So you have influenced uh, many generations of. Uh, uh, physical uh, in physics, in chemistry, and in, uh, in biochemistry and biophysics. So, uh, of course, you, you your words are very generous to all of us. But it's true that uh, you gave uh, structural biology in Brazil would not be like is without you because you were from the beginning uh, one of the. Uh, main uh, uh, one of the person that uh, stimulate a lot to start uh, an animal facility for the structure of, uh, of proteins and uh, macromolecules. So the NMR center uh, was the first that was started in, in, in Brazil and, uh, and uh, to, to study the proteins, the structure of proteins. You accept the students, Marcius went as a postdoc to your lab. And I think uh, uh, we really miss you a lot because you uh, you have your influence is not only direct, as many examples. Um, the NMR Center has had more than 500 uh, people using the, the, the facility and uh, publishing uh, high quality research. And, uh, but also indirectly because people uh, having many times come to your lectures, discussing with you, and you and some. I remember a student that came to me and said, "I was so impressed by Kurt because 
he was so simple. He didn't seem a Nobel Prize man. He was so explaining everything and asking me uh, some suggestion for this or that. So, so that's how. Uh, uh, I mean, we we think that to, for all these years, especially in the last twenty years, we we have shared your wisdom. We have been very ha happy with that, and I hope. Uh, like uh, Professor Alberto Vieira pointed out, that in in few months or at least in a year, we will have you back here to 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 Rio de Janeiro to the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Thank you very much for everything. I say that in the name of myself, but also in the name of Deborah, that he has uh, also uh, uh, experienced very good times with you and Marianne. Thank you. Alberto, where are you? Who else would like to send some words, say some words here, please? Well, I think that we are near the end of this fantastic lecture. Uh, again, I would like to meet you, Professor Butrich, perhaps at the end of this year. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Denise Pires de Carvalho for the introduction. And thank you, Professor Anacelia Castro, for the nice organization, the details, and the, it's not easy to work now in the middle of the pandemic, but this celebration of the 100 years of UFRJ is fantastic. Thank you again to all the participants, and I would like to see with this cup, this event, this conference was an special conference in our institution. And I would like to celebrate again your presence, Dr. Buti, with all the audience. I hope to meet you here soon. Well, thank you all so much for the kind words. I must say I'm very touched by your response. And I only want to repeat my best wishes for things to improve fast. And as a minor side saying, giving me the possibility of coming back to Rio. Thank you all very much. Thank you again. Podemos parar a transmissão, a transmissão e a gravação. Then we can have yes. Top in record, it does right now. Yes, everything. Okay, so we can talk more free.